Okay, I've had this bench up and running for a couple months. It was kind of an experiment, but I'm ready to call it a success. It's got a couple different things on it, maybe you haven't seen before. So I'll go through the bench real quick, and then I'll also show the model so you can get kind of an idea of how it's built, and a little of the construction. But I call it the cross-cut clamp bench for these two different features. Uh, basically, big difference on the bench is gonna be this cutout and trough or whatever we want to call it with dowels they're just friction fit in this is a six foot bench so i just kind of randomly decided three was the right number and the reason you have that cut out in the dowels and why it's called a clamp bench is if you got a work piece so let's take a piece of scrap right here um, you can drop it in below the surface so it's pretty stable and then you can take a clamp a little hard to do one-handed, but you can clamp it to the bench very easily. And then if you got to do something like biscuits or dowels or edge banding, or if you put two clamps on, it's definitely stable enough to hand plane it. And you can also, if you have a long piece like this one, drop it down and then clamp it. And if you have a really big piece, like an entire 4x8 or something close to, I've got holes in the sides here drilled so you can actually bring it on the outside and clamp it. So if you had a 6 foot piece, you could, or something longer than the trough, you could clamp it out to the outside, just having these evenly spaced dowels on both ends. So that's the clamp section of the bench, which I think is super handy, has been for me anyway. And then the cross cut side are these parallel lifts for the track saw, which I actually did a video on them before. This was the original file. Um, they were good, they worked fine. They were all screwed in, one to there and one to the bench, so it was kind of permanently affixed. Plenty strong, you can see I actually cut um, accidentally with the track saw. And it still worked, it was fine, but I decided to change them up, make them a little beefier. But this is great for narrow pieces. Um, say we're doing some furniture, arms and legs and stuff for chairs. And what's great is you, get, you can do any angle at all. You can even do tapered stuff if it's short enough. So I've actually tapered arms of legs and chairs and stuff like that or you just have maybe you have a random angle you need to get that's going to be hard to do on a miter saw and you slide this down line your mark up and you're good to go super handy but i didn't like having it permanently affixed so i changed it a little bit and did uh pegs so you can get this out one-handed there we go there, there. All right, so there's just a hole drilled in the bench and a peg on the little lifts. So screwed to the base or the top and not screwed to the workbench. You just have these off. They're all just friction fit. It's a good friction fit. There we go. A little hard to do one-handed. There. So all the legs are perfectly symmetrical. There's no up or down, left or right. And then the bases, you've either got a screw in set um, design or a peg design. There we go. And really, you could screw this in too. If you knew you were going to be using it for an extended period of time, you could get them in and then maybe drive one screw in the two corners or something like that. But super handy. Um, if you are going to print these yourselves, I print these flat, just like this. And then this one I kind of print in an angle like that. And actually it's about like that. And it really cuts down on the support material. So those are really the two things that make it this uh, bench unique. Thought they'd be helpful. And oh, safety first. Well, third, anyway. 
But that's that. Let me show you the model real quick and a little bit of how I built it. Okay, here we are in the computer. So I will take you through the construction real quick. I tried to film the actual construction, but since it was just a make on the fly thing, it didn't I ended up not getting anything that was usable. So here are the workbenches. These are the two that I had originally started with in my last shop. It was one dedicated to clamping, another dedicated to the crosscut and a work surface. And this was very handy because I could just drag one to wherever I needed it based on the size of the work piece I had. So if I was small, I might just use one bench. If it was a tabletop, I might need both. I would definitely recommend this, but my new shop only had space for one bench. So that's what we did. We took those two apart and really the size I ended up with was based on what was available for lumber because I didn't want to go buy any. So if I turn off the cross cut, the saw, I take off the three quarter inch tops and I'll just get rid of everything except for the legs and we'll build it virtually. So the legs are very simple two by four construction screwed together in an L shape. This one has cutouts for the table saw, which I'll show in a second. But if you build four identical legs, then some stringers, which are just two by fours that now lap in these corners, and you have tons of surface area, you can screw from basically every direction. And this right here ends up with a really robust, strong bench. And then add middle supports where you need them. So in the bottom, just a few to hold the top on. And up on the top, you have an extra stringer so that you can have this gap for your clamp section. And then a sacrificial top, I use three quarter inch plywood because that's what I had. And I like to just screw that and I glue it because I can, I'm pretty abusive on them. So this way I can just replace them when they get too beat up. And then the table saw stand, you can see I notched out, I'll turn it back off. I notched out a little bit of the leg so I could run a support through. And then screw that in really strong and then add these kickers. So that is the top. If you download or if you're interested in making this and you want the plans, you can download this on the website and it'll have the crosscut lift in there in a SketchUp file. I also have these in STL files if you just want to print them. But I hope this was useful. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you build one of your own.